Welcome to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation CF Education Day webcast, Cystic Fibrosis Related Diabetes, Diagnosis and Screening. I'm Leslie Hazel, Director of Patient Resources at the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. This webcast is hosted by the Foundation and supported through an unrestricted educational grant from Genentech. To learn more about CF-related diabetes, CF research, lung health and lung disease, GI issues in cystic fibrosis, and more, please watch an archived webcast on the Foundation's website. This webcast will answer questions related to cystic fibrosis-related diabetes, or CFRDs, as it pertains to diagnosis and screening for the disease. Questions not related to the topic or that ask for medical advice will not be asked or answered. I encourage you, if you have questions, to talk to your CF Care Center doctor and staff to learn more. Or, if you wish, you may contact the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation at 800-FIGHT-CF or info at cff.org. Joining me to talk about diagnosis and screening of CFRD is Dr. Tony Moran and Carol Brunzel from the University of Minnesota. Tony is a professor in the Division Chief of Pediatric Endocrinology at the University. She is also the leading expert in the United States and researcher related to CFRD. And she was a co-leader on the 2010 Cystic Fibrosis Related Care Guidelines that were published. Carol Brunzel is a registered dietitian and certified diabetes ed educator. She has spoken to many healthcare professionals about CFRD and was also a part of the development team of the CF Related Diabetes Care Guidelines. Both Tony and Carol are also co-authors of the fifth edition of the Managing Cystic Fibrosis Related Diabetes, an instruction guide for patients and families that is also available on the Foundation's website. So welcome, ladies. So the first question I have is, what is diabetes and what is cystic fibrosis related diabetes? Before talking about CF related diabetes, let's just talk about diabetes in mm -hmm. general because there are many different kinds of diabetes, but they all have uh, one of two things in common. So either the body doesn't make enough insulin and you are insulin deficient, or the body makes insulin, but the insulin doesn't work very well, and that's insulin resistance. So for diabetes of any sort, you have one of those two things or, or even both of those two things together. So in cystic fibrosis, Actually, let me, um, let me just talk about insulin first because it's important to know um, uh, why you need insulin and, and why insulin um, deficiency would be a problem. So, so here's a picture, a cartoon that shows in pink you see an intestine where the food's been eaten, the food gets broken down into sugar, those little white circles are little sugar that get absorbed through the intestine into the bloodstream. So the, the red thing is a blood vessel. And, and you can see the blood vessel is surrounded by, by squares that are the cells of the tissue. Cells need sugar, glucose, for energy, but the sugar can't get in from the bloodstream into the cell unless insulin is there. So the yellow, the yellow thing there is the pancreas, and you can think of insulin as the key that opens up the cells to let insulin in. So you need insulin uh, to use your food for energy, to gain weight and to build muscle. The sugar, or glucose, gets used for energy. Protein gets used to build up your muscle and you need insulin to keep that muscle mass up. And then the fat that you eat gets, gets stored in fat cells and you need insulin to, um, to uh, store your fat in your fat cells. So insulin is anabolic. Insulin helps you build up all your body tissues. So diabetes. There are um, uh, the two most common types in the world, type 1, type 2. Type 1 diabetes is the kind that, you, um, that is most common in children. It used to be called juvenile onset diabetes, insulin-dependent diabetes. Um, these are people who make no insulin. They will die if they don't get insulin. Type 2 diabetes used to be called adult onset or non-insulin dependent. Um, this is the kind of diabetes that's most common in adults, in particular adults who are overweight, have high cholesterol, have high blood pressure. Um, these patients do make insulin, it just doesn't work very well and that's called insulin resistance. 
So CF diabetes um, is not type 1 or type 2, but it has some of the features of each of those. Um, the, the big thing is that people with CF diabetes do not make enough insulin. They make some, but not enough. They tend to use it well, they tend to be insulin sensitive, except for periods of time when they're sick, and then they don't use their insulin very well. So why is diabetes common in CF? Is there a genetic factor that's related to it? So um, the, the first reason that it's common in CF is that everybody with CF has scarring or fibrosis mm -hmm. of their pancreas, and that damages the cells that make insulin. So, um, so, so there just aren't enough cells to make enough insulin. There probably is something genetic also uh, in terms of um, affecting how the cells that are left make insulin. Mm -hmm. um, so there were a number of questions that came in. Um, a lot of people asked this, and that is, does eating too many sweets or having too many sugars lead to CF-related diabetes? Is there anything that a person can do to not get CF-related diabetes? There is nothing a person can do to not get CF diabetes. The other way of looking at that is there is nothing a person can do to cause themselves to get diabetes. It's a matter of, um, of just the scarring that is occurring in the pancreas and, and probably a combination of genetics as well. Um, if you eat a lot of sugar, your blood sugar may be high. That doesn't mean that what you ate caused the diabetes. It just means it's unmasking. It just means you're, you're, you're seeing it. You're so, finding it, yeah. Right. So, so there's nothing you can do to cause it. There's nothing you can do to catch it. There's nothing you can do to prevent it. So what's the likelihood of somebody getting CF-related diabetes? What's the youngest age it's been found in? And what's the typical age that people are diagnosed with CF-related diabetes? So diabetes is the most common what's called comorbidity or, mm -hmm. or other associated problem um, with CF. And um, it can be seen in infants. There, are, there have been babies a few, few months old with mm -hmm. CF described with diabetes. Usually occurs earlier. So, so here's a bar graph showing um, along the bottom different age groups and then just prevalence, how common the percentage of people in that age group who have it. And you can see in children less than 10, uncommon, can occur, but uncommon. About 15% of adolescents, about 40% of people in their mm -hmm. 20s and 30s, mm -hmm. more than half of people um, over the age of 40. So, so increasingly common as people get older and, and eventually more than half of CF patients have it. So one person wrote in, um, a parent, their child has been diagnosed with early CF-related diabetes um, and they're trying to find out how quickly will she progress to need insulin? Is this a spectrum disease? Yeah, so I'm not sure exactly what she means by early diabetes. So, so there is a spectrum, um, and, and we define it um, in large part by the oral glucose tolerance test. But on the one hand, you have completely normal glucose tolerance. And then on the far other side would be complete absence of, of insulin, mm -hmm. like in type 1 diabetes, mm -hmm. which, which most CF patients aren't there. And there's this progression um, starting out with just very subtle defects that if you put um, a continuous glucose monitor or CGM, it's something you can put on to, to measure glucose at home. Really, almost everybody with CF has, has little blips now and then in their blood sugar. Mm -hmm. And then we start to see changes on the oral glucose tolerance test. And, and over time, people move along the spectrum towards diabetes. There's a little bit of a wiggle as they go. You know, it's not, a, it's not a constant thing. Blood sugars kind of go back and forth, but people move along here. Mm -hmm. um, people who have normal glucose tolerance are generally clinically stable. But we know as glucose tolerance starts to deteriorate, that that's usually also associated with increased risk of, of uh, pulmonary exacerbation. Um, and, and then as you get to diabetes, we know that untreated diabetes ha has a very high risk of worse lung function, mortality. So if someone actually has a diagnosis of diabetes, they need to be treated. Um, if they're in that kind of pre-diabetic period, 
we're really not sure right now whether they should be treated or not. So does having that diagnosis of CFRD mean that um, CF disease is getting worse? No, it, it's, um, it's part of CF, but, but there's CF lung disease, there's CF sinus disease, there's the, the pancreas and the diabetes, there's CF gut disease, CF liver disease, there's, there's all these organs that are affected and, and in some people some organs are affected more than others, um, but it, it doesn't necessarily go hand in hand. So one person, you know, a couple people actually wrote in, they seemed very scared or worried about starting insulin. What happens to someone with CF-related diabetes if they don't get any insulin? So what do you get without insulin? There, there are the things that, that everybody, type 1, type 2, any sort of diabetes get without insulin. And then there are some things that we particularly worry about in CF. Um, when your blood sugars are high, you tend to be tired, you tend to not concentrate well, vision can be blurred. Um, uh, when the blood sugars are high, they're in the bloodstream. Your blood doesn't need sugar. The, it's the tissue that needs sugar, but they can't get out of the blood out of the bloodstream if you don't have enough insulin. So you excrete them in your urine, so increased urination, um, thirst, dehydration, and of course in CF with dehydration you worry about um, lung secretions getting mm -hmm. dehydrated. And, and over time anybody with high blood sugars can, can develop kidney disease, eye disease, nerve disease. Those things can happen in CF too. But really in CF we aren't as concerned about the high blood sugars as the insulin deficiency. Mm -hmm. So insulin is what you need to build up your fat and muscle stores mm -hmm. and nutrition and survival are, are so closely linked in, in CF. So the main problem without insulin is malnutrition and, and weaker muscles and, and poor lung function. So what does untreated uh, diabetes do for somebody's CF lung disease? Um, it's not good. Uh -huh. Okay. So here, here's a picture from something we um, published actually several years ago, and, and there's three groups here. There's normal glucose tolerance, impaired glucose tolerance, which is kind of pre-diabetes, and then early diabetes. And these these three groups were all untreated, and we followed them over time and followed their their loss of lung function. And, and the worse the glucose tolerance, the worse the loss of lung function. So, um, so, so clearly there's this relationship between insulin deficiency and loss of lung function. And you, you talked a little bit about um, uh, undernutrition in CF and the problems related to that. Can you expound a little bit? Yeah, so if you don't have enough insulin, um, you, you can't use sugar for energy mm -hmm. and you start using your own muscles for mm -hmm. energy and you, you break down your own muscles. So, so even more of a problem than the high blood sugar is the insulin deficiency that, that's just causing breakdown of muscle tissue, breakdown of fat tissue, and that undernutrition has, has a negative effect on um, lung function and survival. Um, this question, somebody wanted to know, if, is it better to find and treat CF-related diabetes early or to, um, you know, is a person who's diagnosed early better off in their health? Um, in general with that? Does it help with, you know, it gets to the big question, does it impact life expectancy right. when, you, when you treat right. CF-related diabetes? So I'm really glad that person asked that question because that, that really is the key, the key here. And I have a slide that's really complicated, but I think it's really important. So, so I want people to bear with me and, and look at it here. There are three panels, okay, and there are three different time points. The bottom one is the early 1990s, the middle one's about the year 2000, and then the top one is more recent. And, and these are survival curves. So along the, the bottom is age in decade, and then um, uh, actually these are mortality curves. So and then uh, along the other axis is percent of patients who died. Uh, red is women, blue is men, dashed line is no diabetes, solid line is diabetes. So if you look at the bottom curve, those red and blue dashed lines along the bottom, show a, a low death rate amongst CF patients without diabetes and a very high death rate amongst CF patients with diabetes. Mm -hmm. And in particular, the red line, in particular women with diabetes. And then around the year 2000, that, that middle box, 
you see those lines coming down and closer together. So, so mortality is starting to decrease in CF patients with diabetes, although more in men than women. But the top box shows our current data, and there's slightly increased mortality in people with diabetes, especially over the age of about 35 or 40. But, but that gap has really, really narrowed, and in particular, there's not a difference between mm -hmm. men and women. So what's different between the top right. box and the bottom box? We have gotten very good at screening for diabetes mm -hmm. and very aggressive at treating it with insulin. And it has made a huge difference in mortality. Now these are people with cystic fibrosis and people with cystic fibrosis related diabetes who attend the University of Minnesota Care Center, correct? Exactly. This is not across the United right. States. Right. We follow about 500 patients, mm -hmm. about half adults, half children, and, and these are the results of their annual oral glucose tolerance testing, their, their um, di being diagnosed mm -hmm. with diabetes, they're being started on insulin. So what are the signs that a person needs to be looking for in regards to onset of CF-related diabetes? So there are some signs um, that, that clearly indicate diabetes. Increased thirst and urination, inability to gain weight or maintain weight when, you, when you're doing everything else right, uh, not growing well in, in children, faster than expected decline in mm -hmm. lung function. Um, those things may not mean diabetes, but you have to think diabetes when you have those symptoms. However, the most important point is mm -hmm. there may not be any symptoms at all. Ooh. So you may not know you have it unless you're screened for it. Which again goes back to why it's so important to be screened. So um, how often should a person be screened and what test is used for screening? Um, so the test of choice is the oral glucose tolerance test. That's that um, test where you come in fasting in the morning and you um, you drink a certain amount of a orange soda pop kind of drink and, and get your blood sugars measured mm -hmm. before and after. That should be done once a year. It should be done um, not when you're ill, but when you're in your baseline state of health. And it should start at least by age 10. And so done every year. Are there any mm -hmm. other times that people should be screened or monitored for CF-related diabetes? There are. So there's a couple times when people are, are particularly at risk for diabetes. And, and in those times, we don't do an oral glucose tolerance test. But, but when people are sick, mm -hmm. um, that, that's often when you first see diabetes just because of the stress on the body and the insulin resistance. So anytime someone's hospitalized, their blood sugars should be checked during the hospitalization before and after after um, meals to look for diabetes. And you, you really want to catch it when someone's sick because um, uh, if you need treatment, then um, you want to get that treatment or the illness could be, could be prolonged. Mm -hmm. um, there are people who need insulin when they're sick and don't need it when they're not sick. Just that extra stress of being sick mm -hmm. um, needs just a little extra insulin. Um, the other time that we screen is there are certain times when people are stressed but are at home. Mm -hmm. so, so very common now for people not to be hospitalized but to be sent home on IV antibiotics or to get a high dose steroid burst at home. Or the other thing is when people are getting really concentrated gastrostomy feedings overnight mm -hmm. at home. And in those situations we'll send people home with a meter, they poke their finger, check their blood sugars. If those blood sugars are high, that certainly suggests diabetes, but the meters are not really accurate. So, so in that situation, before we give someone a diagnosis, we um, ask that they come in and get an official laboratory glucose reading. So um, someone wanted to know, is having CF-related diabetes permanent? Once you have it, you have it, or can it be reversed? Once you have it, you have it. It can't be reversed. But you have a diagnosis of diabetes. You may or may not need insulin all that time. There, people's blood sugars wax and wane. There are some people whose blood sugars are high every time they're sick, high every time they're on steroids, and then they're fine in mm -hmm. between. Um, so you may or may not need insulin continuously, but once you've been diagnosed with diabetes, you have diabetes and, and the diagnosis doesn't go away. So what advice do you have um, related to screening and diagnosis for the people watching? So don't be afraid of the diagnosis. It's, um, you know, people don't want to have a 
second disease. It's not really a second disease. It, it's part of CF. There's a good chance you're going to get it. If you get it, it will be a hassle. It'll be extra work. It'll be things you have to do that you don't do now. But it's completely manageable. It's something you can control, something you can be in charge of. You don't have to make major changes in your lifestyle. Um, it's a doable thing, so don't be afraid of it. Don't delay getting screening because you're afraid of getting a diagnosis. Um, get your screening. Get your blood sugar checked when you're ill. Get, get your oral glucose tolerance test because knowing you have diabetes and treating it can save your life. Just a couple last questions. I know we talked about this earlier in this broadcast, but just for clarification, is there anything people can do to um, prevent from getting CF-related diabetes, like not eat as many sweets or exercise more? Nothing. Okay. The scarring that takes place in your pancreas is totally independent of what you're eating, how you're exercising. There, there is nothing you can do to prevent diabetes. So live a healthy life, eat the food you like, um, mm -hmm. uh, get good exercise because it's the healthy thing to do. But, but not because it'll stop you from getting diabetes. Okay, so two last questions, kind of on the same perspective. If there is a cure for cystic fibrosis, will there, that mean a cure for CF-related diabetes? And how do these new drugs, the VX770, VX809, how might that affect CF-related diabetes? This is a really interesting question <laughs> that nobody knows the answer to. We know that, um, that the CFTR channel is present mm -hmm. in the cells that make insulin. Um, if we fix that channel, could we prevent diabetes? We are just now talking about studies to look at that. So that's great. And thank you, Tony, and thank you, Carol. This has been a wonderful discussion about CF-related diabetes and what people should know. You can read some of the frequently asked questions about CF-related diabetes on the Foundation's website under Living with Cystic Fibrosis, Staying Healthy, and click on CFRD. This is also where you can find the instructional manual um, about how to manage CF-related diabetes. You can also read the uh, CF care guidelines for cystic fibrosis-related diabetes in the treatment section, section under CF Care Guidelines, click on Nutrition slash GI, and then you can be, read what is recommended for CFRD care. To learn more about type 1 and type 2 diabetes, you can go to the American Diabetes Association website at www.diabetes.org and click on Diabetes Basic. Also, this is what Carol said you'd be able to find your diabetes ID. This concludes our virtual CF Education Day webcast about CF-related diabetes. I would like to thank you for watching, Tony and Carol for answering the questions that we had come in, Rick Vasta and the technical crew, Melissa Chin, Genentech, and the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation for making this webcast possible. Thank you very much.